and remodeling lipolysis or adipocytolysis or inducing apoptosis of fat cells at around 70 plus or minus 5 and treating nerves. From the burn literature in the world of plastic surgery and general surgery, there's tens of thousands of papers over decades. Temperature times time, area under the curve, a central zone of necrosis, another zone of coagulation, another zone of inflammation, and then a normal zone. We actually function clinically as a pro-inflammatory device, not as a coagulation device, although you could coagulate. So if you heat some fascia and you heat it long enough, for a minute or so, you can get 10 millimeter marks to contract to three millimeters in one minute. That's not clinically viable, but it demonstrates the concept that you can contract the tissues and you can contract them well. And of course, we monitor the inside, here, as the temperature rises, we monitor the outside, and we can do these things. This has been shown, just a little setup for what's coming. Simple case, heat under the neck, one of Doug Key's original patients, and heat and tighten, you see a lot of these pictures. Heat and tighten, improve the neck, you see a lot of those pictures. This patient is the one that taught me something about, whoa, I wonder if we're doing this mass, I wonder if we're doing fat, I wonder if we're doing skin, I wonder which layers we're doing. Oh, well, we've got this device to control temperature. Let's look at how we're going to then selectively target layers. So here she is at a month. Here she is at six months. It's not Photoshop, and it's no other treatment. One treatment, one time. She's 48 years old, and a patient we know very well. Now, this patient presented a different challenge. I learn a lot from my patients if you just listen to them and what they have to say. She says, I want a facelift, I'm 56 years old, but not now, what can you do to hold me off until I retire in eight or nine or 10 years? So we do a one month result, 55 degrees, we get some improvement and she likes it, but it's not enough, she wants more. So what does she say? There's her one month picture again, and there she is in a year. It starts to fall off a little, she didn't get a great response. Some people don't respond with so much collagen. Okay, show me to explain. So here we, you can turn off the audio. Um, here we are halfway through with doing the platysmal bands. Done the left side, haven't done the right side. So if you, you know, if you want to selectively target the platysma and then you want to target the skin, you can do this 85 degrees for the nerve and 60 degrees for the neck. And it, it works very nice. So here's a still picture of that. Very clear effect on the platysmal bands. And then here is Again, let's go to here. This is bilateral, we've now done both sides, and we ask her to move her neck, and when she does, she can't do much of anything. So we've effectively treated the nerves, and we've treated the neck. All right, longevity. One of my patients that I used for teaching, March of 2013, there she is at a year, there she is at two and a half, there she is at four. Starting to fall off just a little bit, but there's longevity for you. And here's somebody who doesn't need it, and she likes it, she talked me into it. One of my longtime patients says, why are you letting all those other people have that new thing and I can't have it? Can it melt fat? First patient I ever did, why did I do this? Because we had a teaching session, the patient didn't show, and somebody volunteered said, I'll get on the table. And they said, I wonder if you can melt my fat. This is 70 degrees for eight minutes, right down the midline, and it's 60 degrees elsewhere. You can easily melt the fat. Dial it up, dial it down. Here we are at another teaching session. Somebody says, can you lift those brows? two minutes, three minutes, doing the heat directly in here. After treating the nerve, relax the, the, the tension on the muscle, in the brow, and then lift it. So this is doing the heating around the eye, superior, crow's feet, and underneath, and then uh, ablating the nerve. Just smile for me. Turn off the audio, please. So here's a patient where he's done half the face. We've done the facial nerves, we've done the supraorbital branch, we've done the crow's feet, we've done the angular branch, and we've done the neck, and we haven't done the left side yet. This is pan-facial, 10 nerves. Not many of you are gonna do this, but if you wanna rework the patient, you can. Here's the still picture of the mappings of what we did on her. She said, Botox doesn't work on me. She is a nurse injector who's had, injected, had herself injected multiple times. Now, I don't do a lot of this, but guess what? It's approved by the FDA as a soft tissue coagulation device. And if you want to coagulate little veins, you can coagulate little veins and you need to get the skin up really high. 
But if you want to, you can see those veins um, disappear and they'll, it'll work. One of a kind case, patient has a rhinoplasty, doesn't like the way her nose, her muscles bunch up. So what I said, I learned from this, there's a little tiny branch there to the lateral nasal wall. So there she is. I missed the right side. I didn't get it very well, but I got the left side. Congenital blepharophimosis, coronal brow lift, 10 years of Botox, a couple of eyelid operations in between. We map her out, and there she is 10 minutes after we treat her. So unusual cases. Banana roll, I'm gonna skip that. This is three hours of 70 so degrees, good, good and we're gonna stop. And that's it, pre, post. So what I say is, if you can map it, you can treat it. Think of layers, think of tissue selectivity, and it can be the paintbrush in the hands of the artist. Thank you very much.